All right, guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now, I was trying to think of a unique title for this video, but the best way to describe it is using the camera in Blender. Beginner stuff, to be honest. If you're familiar with the camera or you've used Blender before, it might not necessarily be the tutorial for you, but I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips, uh, things like adding camera shake, using the camera rigs, uh, but it's always best to start at the very beginning. So the best way to start this is keyboard shortcut keys. So if you want to jump into the camera view, pressing numpad 0 will automatically put you into the camera view. And this is probably one of the most used shortcuts that you actually use. Now if you're moving about in the viewport and you get a really nice angle or you get a nice shot, you can press Control alt and numpad 0 and that'll lock the camera to the viewport. So that's a really nice way if you're moving about, you get a nice shot, you go, yay, I like that. Nice and easy. Now, this comes from a question on YouTube and essentially the user wants to hide everything outside of the camera view. And this is really easy to do. If we select the camera, we can go to the data properties on the right hand side and you can see here viewport display and it's already checked for us and it's called pass part out. But you can see that it sits at 0 0.5. If we push this up to 1, it will essentially hide everything outside of the shot or outside of the camera. Now, this doesn't save on memory or GPU or anything like this. I believe this is just an OpenGL trick. It's basically just putting a border around it. It's not like a camera killing trick where it hides objects and stuff like this. But it is very good if you want to focus directly on the scene. Now, one tip that I might suggest is adding the name. Now, the reason for this is you might have different cameras in the scene and it's quite easy to get confused. So if you enable the name, you'll know exactly what camera you're working in. Now, one thing that you might use quite a lot of the time is composition guides. Composition guides are good if you're framing a shot or you need to track a shot or you want it to always be in the center of an object. So enabling the composition guides certainly has a benefit here. So if we put thirds on, that's us working in the rule of thirds. Great recommend you to check out the rule of thirds it's always good for setting up shots we do have different options the center one's probably a good one as well we have diagonals as well we have the golden ratio generally i don't use these but they're there if we need it and we can also keyframe this now i don't necessarily know why you would keyframe this but we can so we can enable thirds keyframe it move to frame 20 keyframe again move to frame 40 take it off and then keyframe it and then when we're actually in the camera view the guides will go on and off Fairly fundamental stuff to be honest. If you're working in print or maybe you're doing a certain film and you need it to stay within a certain margin of your shot, you can enable safe areas. Now safe areas as you can see here it puts a border around it. And this is good if you're working in different aspect ratios and stuff like this or you're working in film and TV and you need this margin. Uh, so this will be the safe area essentially. This is where you're always going to kind of shoot in. If we go up to the lens options, just think of it as a normal camera. We can change the focal length. Now generally what you'll work in is maybe 30 to 50 millimeters. Depends on your shot. There's some really good guides how to actually set up your focal points. We have a kind of tilt shift here. So we can shift here and shift here. Thing that you might be interested in or might come in handy at one point is you might have this issue where you don't see an object in the background and this is generally your clipping uh, and this works inside of the camera and it works inside of the viewport so there's two very separate things you might see it in the viewport but you might not necessarily see it in the camera so just change your clipping distance so that's pretty much that's pretty much the basics of the camera now, there's a few kind of added bonuses here that we can go to. If you go to Edit Preferences and we type in Camera, you can see here we have Add Camera Rigs. So we can quickly enable this and then we can go to Add and then we can go to Camera. And we have a couple more options. We have a Dolly Camera Rig. Now, these are really good if you're wanting a camera that's rigged and set up and ready to go. Personally, I don't use them because they get a little bit convoluted. They use things like bones and stuff like this. But they are actually very powerful, uh, very good to use. So if I go into this camera view, you can see that all these options have been reset. We don't see the composition guides, we don't see the name. So it's always good to enable this feature. Uh, just so you know, if you want to work on an active camera, so we have two cameras in the scene here. We have the dolly camera and we have the normal camera. If you click here, that will switch to the active camera for you. Uh, nice and easy, to be honest. A lot of people click here. 
but it doesn't actually change the active camera so you need to be careful with that one just click on the camera on the right hand side so you have this option to have camera rigs personally i keep it nice and simple what i'll do is i'll just start a new scene here and i'll go to add and i'll add in an empty and i'll make the empty a plane access and we'll just delete the default cube here what i'll do with the camera is i'll just quickly reset everything and i'll put this down to 90 degrees so we're facing and i'll put this to 90 degrees as well and then i'll move it back maybe five meters on the z and five on the x so we have something like this then what i'll do is i'll select the camera and i'll hold in shift and i'll parent it to the empty and this means essentially the empty can be animated and it's good for doing things like a turntable or just moving this and animating the camera at the same time so you can get this kind of pull effect if you want to change the perspective of the camera you can actually do this by clicking here on this kind of triangle and we can move it in and out like this probably not the best way to do it you're probably better changing the focal length here and the lens options but it is there if you need to use it generally i'll have a rig set up like this the next thing i'll do is i'll maybe add in something like another empty like a sphere and i'll use this to drive my focal point so i can have this kind of focus puller so i'll just call this focus 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 pizza on your focus i'll select the camera i'll then go to the depth of field options and i'll use the focus on an object and i'll use the focus object now the advantages of doing this is you can strain it to an object or you can always manually tweak this and you can technically pair this to that so it always moves in the scene with you uh, so that's one thing that i like to do generally now if you want to make the camera shake there is an add-on uh, let me just quickly pull it up for you here and it's called camera shake if i just download it install it like any other add-on so let me just quickly enable it for you uh, camera shake if i and what we'll now see is when we're in the camera options we now have camera shake if i and we can add basic animation so this is investigation if you check out the side you'll notice that it kind of wobbles just ever so slightly so we have these whole different options so you have like shake you have handy cam run you have walk to the store and these all add different variations of noise and stuff like that's a really good way to get that handheld look uh, one that i do recommend and that's pretty much the basics of the camera now you could go a lot further to be honest but i think if you're just getting started hopefully this will help you do me a favor guys like the video subscribe to the channel check out the octane blender page follow me on twitter yeah, and take it easy.